welcome students um i'd like to go through this video lecture um about uh, endocrine systems and we are going to deal with the um uh, histology of uh, endocrine organs the objectives of this class mainly on hormones or chemical messengers that may influence uh, every cell so every cell is uh, again uh, in in turn controlled by uh, our maintaining the homeostasis um, especially with the chemical messengers and that chemical messengers is um, from hormones and uh, we are going to study the origin histology and secretions and functions of pituitary first and then we are going to uh, deal with some of the hypothalamus and the hormones and um, uh, parathyroid hormones and pineal glands that's what the overall objectives of this lecture uh, the next part we will go through um, some sort of short introduction that endocrine system and nervous systems are um, both are are controlling some of the function of physiology of tissues and both response that's our nervous system and endocrine systems both response external as well as internal variations of the cells and sending messages to various parts of the body and maintaining the homeostatic mechanism so this is some sort of a communication from one organ to the other organs and that is mainly done by nervous system as well as the endocrine system and um, a nervous system there is one speed of 130 um, meters per second and uh, the um, hormonal effects vary from minutes to hours and days some months or even a lifetime the hormones is something like a slower response in some cases and some of them they act in some tissues within few minutes so that's the part which we are going to deal with today they are another one is the interdependence and usually nervous and endocrine systems are act independently but some of the hormone secretion we need nervous system as well uh, which last class we deal with mainly on the um, spinal cord and brain and some of those uh, um, systems from uh, brain which is uh, have a commanding authority to other uh, endocrine glands so they can act cooperatively in some instance they uh, can also act independently and uh, they also have interdependence one among the other that is the neuroendocrine glands will expect from nervous system to activate in turn the neuroendocrine gland sometimes it may switch off the uh, synthesis through the nervous system so the hormones of adrenal medulla and pituitary are released in response to nervous stimuli from hypothalamus so we are going to see some of the uh, structural aspects of um, um the hypothalamus as well as the pituitary and i'm going to switch over to the document camera and now you can um, you can see in this uh, picture um where the pituitary a uh, gland over there i'll i'll write it in a in a clear way here you get the hypothalamus this is hypothalamus hypothalamus and this is the gland pituitary so they are present in brain okay and um the other part of the this one this part is the stack okay and the section of what happened inside the histology of inside pituitary gland is the sagittal section of pituitary so I just focus it a little bit. 
sac and the sagittal sections of pituitary glands. I want to give a clinical comments over the pituitary gland. They are close proximity to the optic tract, that meaning it's an optic nerve, okay? And uh, this, um, if there is a, a tumor in pituitary, okay, and this tumor in pituitary, sometimes, you know, it's a brine tumor, but the pituitary gland's tumor, um, that forms, uh, you know, give a severe pressure to the structure of pituitary glands here. I mean, to the resulting in partial blindness in one or both eyes after surgical removal of the tumor. Vision is usually improved or may return to normal. That's what the clinical comments over for the pituitary and optical nerve. So, this... Um, pituitary, they are the optic nerve. So if there is a growth of this one, and this optic nerve will, will be obstructed, so you may get a partial blindness. So if they remove this part of, uh, of, uh, of the pituitary tumor, then you will get the optic nerve without any interruption, it can communicate. So, so this is for optic nerve and blindness. The another aspect of um, um, pituitary gland, in in a way, um, is a hyper and hyper functioning of the pituitary gland. If this pituitary gland is um, doing in a, a, a I'll write it here. Hyper hyperfunction of pituitary. If it is hyperfunction, it, especially in the tumor during tumor of cancer on the pituitary, that will lead to more of growth hormones and that lead to more growth hormones, more growth hormones. And that will uh, lead in the, you know, if this condition in, in, in adolescence, before the epiphysis of long bones have fused and the growth of long bones continues, the person may grow taller, taller to the height of eight to nine feet. Okay, that's the stimulation. A condition, we call it as a, a giantism. G-I-A-N-T-I-S-M. So, it's giant, it's giantism, okay. If the tumor appears after the body tissue continue to grow, okay, that's the condition. If this during the adolescent side you get giantism, giant, okay, and if the tumor appears after the long bone growth, I mean after the adolescence, after adolescence, a d o l s e s, after adolescent, if there is a tumor, that will lead to, you know, the Fashion is different, um, is a growing in abnormal condition that is called acromegaly, A-C-R-O, acromegaly, acromegaly, this is after, where you will find thickening of bones of extremities, nose, jaws, toes and fingers, everything goes abnormal, uh, that's thickening. And soft tissue organs like a tongue, liver, and kidneys, and there's a general coursing of the facial features. We will see in a little bit later. So the hyper functioning like this, and uh, if the pituitary is uh, uh, doing in a hypo level, if it is in a hypo functioning, H-I-Y-P-O, hypo function of pituitary, 
that will lead to if it is uh, during the childhood if there is not synthesizing enough of growth hormone and uh, they call it as a dwarfism d w a r dwarfism they are they are growing smaller in, in, in their body shape in general the body develop in a normal proportion of each other but uh, the rate of development greatly decreases that's what they said so 10 year old child may have a bodily development of a child of 4 to 5 years so 10 year looks like 4 to 5 years this is mainly of hypofunction so now shall we go into some uh, details in, in, in the um, pituitary the chemicals we'll see the general one here the chemical messengers uh, that's what I explained the hormone chemical messengers that's what it is been written here this is the chemical messenger from secretory cells and that will lead into the tissue spaces tissue spaces and then diffuse into capillaries and consists of amino acids, peptides, proteins and glycoproteins, steroids and biogenic amines. They are all this you know diffused into capillaries and, and these secretory cells will, will have this all of them glycoprotein, steroid, biogenic. So they are the compounds which are existing in the tissues and then you know getting into the blood and lymph and then they are going to transport it into target organs or control and regulation all cells affected and that exam growth and metabolism see here I just all cells are affected by the growth and metabolism this is uh, called the chemical messengers we call it as a hormones hormones they normally as a duct less gland so the the hormones is synthesized in the gland but there is no duct that's why it is being secreted into tissue spaces there's no duct here and then it's diffused into capillaries after that the secretory cells directly to the tissue spaces and then it is diffuses the capillaries there is no duct or, or the passage so that's why it's a ductless gland otherwise the hormones endocrine glands we call it as ductless glands and let us see the another example here you can see the common features where the polyhydral cells okay you can see the uh, an example how the ductless glands looks like you can see these are polyhydral cells and and these are the nucleus and, and now it is being secreted into the tissue space here. Look at this one here, polyhydral cells. And they, and you, you can get this tissue space here. And uh, you can see the fenestrated capillaries is getting into directly into the capillaries. Tissue space and tissue space into the capillaries. And islets of cells in connective tissues. You can see this one here. And some of the other tissues, hormones in interstitial spaces into capillaries. These are the hormones that are synthesized, and then it's getting into the capillaries. So this is capillaries here, and then here is a fenestrated capillaries. So the tissue is uh, uh, networked with the capillaries, and uh, the gland secretes the compound or the hormones directly into the capillaries. So that's the capillaries, and from here to the capillaries. So that's the main idea how the ductless gland will work on. Now let's go into the uh, endocrine organs. What are the endocrine organs or the glands that you can get it? Endocrine organs, which we can see here. Um, okay. Adrenal glands. Thyroid glands, parathyroid glands, thymus, pineal, and pituitary. So we will see in our lecture pituitary, parathyroid, thyroid, pineal glands, and adrenals. And thymus, we are not covering up much on this one. Okay. 
then let's go on to the next one is the consolidated endocrine cells again now we are talking about the organs in the earlier slide now we are going to see uh, consolidated uh, endocrine cells okay consolidated endocrine cells so we the endocrine cells are present in in hypothalamus they are also present in uh, pancreas and and uh, the cells endocrine cells are present in GA tract endocrine cells are also present in testes endocrine cells are present in ovaries and others so what is the difference between the previous one the previous one the slide which i showed you um, this will have a, its organs but in the organs you get the tissues and cells and uh, apart from these organs there are other cells and tissues can also synthesize the uh, hormone that's the cells are present in hypothalamus, pancreas, and then GA tract, and testes, and ovaries, and others. So we will see those. Uh, first, we will see the pituitary and their relationship. Okay, we will see the pituitary organ. Pituitary uh, relationship in here. Um, where the pituitary is going to be. In, uh, in the system, it is in the brine, as I mentioned. These are the brine cells, the relationships. Okay. And uh, you find the hypothalamus control and hypophysial hormone. Hypothalamus, which is controlling hypophysial hormones. We'll see that. Hypophysis has a brine appendage here. You can see that one here, this one, this part, hypophysial. And this is the pituitary, pituitary relationship, hypophysis as a brain app. Yeah. See the hypophysis a part of a pituitary organ. And there are hormones are synthesized from hypophysis. See hypophysial what are different types of uh, hormones synthesized from this hypophysis. Okay? We'll see that one. The hypophysial uh, pituitary hormones they modulate other endocrine glands. See, one endocrine gland is controlling the another endocrine gland. That you should remember first. Okay, the remote area where there's another uh, endocrine glands there, but that endocrine glands is uh, activated from the number two. Here, the modulation of uh, the endocrine glands are tropic for tropic for the growth or development and uh, nutrition. So these are the items. Endocrine glands, which is re responsible for development. Endocrine glands, responsible for the tropic for the growth. And endocrine glands, that's the responsible for the homeostasis of the nutrition. So they are synthesized from hypophysial uh, hormone or pituitary hormone. Okay, the pituitary it's a large sector, but there the, a part of pituitary gland is hypophysial. From that hypophysial, there is some gland, uh, I mean, hormones are synthesized. They are thyroid stimulating hormone, otherwise we call it as TSH. Follicle stimulating hormone, that is FSH. And luteinizing hormone, that is called the LH. And equivalent to interstitial cell stimulating ICSH, interstitial cell stimulating hormone. And then uh, adrenocorticotropic hormone, otherwise we call it ACTH hormones. Okay, these, all these four of them, which is coming from hypophysial part of pituitary. Okay. Now, number two, um, they can also act on the hypophysial factor, can also act on non-endocrine tissues. So, this is the earlier one. These are the endo hypophysial pituitary hormone act on endocrine glands. So one endocrine gland with another endocrine gland. So that's an example of this. And uh, some of them, they act on the non-endocrine tissue on organs. So you have to please remember that hypophysial region of pituitary, they have uh, one is endocrine tissue acting on endocrine gland. Another one is non-endocrine tissue on organs. What are the hormones for activating that? 
somatotropin or STH or growth hormones on skeletal structure here. Another hormone is prolactin milk production and they can act on diuretic hormone or ADH or vasopressin on kidneys and kidney cells. Okay. So in the kidney cells they are not endocrine cells but they will act as an anti hormone, they will act as in kidneys, they act on kidneys. And then another one is oxytocin or uterine contraction or parturition um, hormone, they are in the uterine contraction. Another site of this action, hypophysial hormone is melanocyte stimulating hormone or dispersal of melanin or uh, especially in, in amphibian, that's in frog, you do that. So, you've got the non-endocrine tissues where these hypophysial uh, uh, hormones are acting. So these are the non-endocrine tissues and organs. Now let us go, the next phase is development of hypophysis. Now we will see how the hypophysis is being developed, okay, from the early part of the, devel uh, of the development from the fetus uh, after the uh, fertilization. You know, if you if you see, if you remember in your embryology class, the neuroectodermal or notochord which is formed, so this one is the earlier phase. And you can see the rat case pouch or oral ectoderm here, detachment from oral cavity. This, see here, it gives a, a cavity here. So this part, this depression. So the, the initially it, it forms like a, 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 a notochord which is formed the first development on the um, hypophysis that is on the earliest stage on the development after the fertilization when the fetal development uh, where the mouth and down growth from the primitive brain you know so at that time the birth of uh, 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 the development of uh, of the neuroectodermal floor of diencephalon, diencephalon, that's from the brain development, okay. And this is the cerebral vesicle where the head is being developed in future. So, and, and, and this is the one where the brain development and this notochord and then how the first part and then the second one is the pouch is appearing onto the, approaching to the floor of the ventricle here, the pouch, the same thing which is going over there. This is also coming and this is another development in this area. And then the fusion of free vesicle and the neural process. And the fusion of this and this together. And then they form the formation of uh, parts, uh, part tuberalysis. So this is, uh, now this is the development of, uh, the fully development of uh, the um, pituitary glands. We'll see in the, in the next phase on fully developed one. You can see this uh, optic chiasma. This is the one with the optic nerve which is going to be there. If there is a tumor of this, it will block here and thereby you get the blindness. So they want to remove that and then they can correct this. Adenohypophysis, this is oral ectoderm, adenohypophysis, this region we call it adenohypophysis. Pars distalis, this is another part, is 70% of the pituitary gland, 70%. And this is the pars nervosa. So there are, they divide into two portions of one side is pars uh, distalis, and the other side is pars nervosa. And the joining here is the infundibulum and neurohypophysis or neuroectoderm. So this was the neurohypophysis, or uh, oral ectoderm, and this is another side is neuroectoderm. This is the region, you the name for it. This is a mature hypophysis or pituitary. Hypophysis is another name. Mature hypophysis is called pituitary. And uh, this part is the division, and then you find a, a pars intermedia. So that's present in the middle. So these are the part of pituitary gland as such. Okay. Then you see a cross section of this because histology is always the tissue section so you will see the cross section of pituitary and you see the pituitary cross section and uh, you get the spatial relationship pituitary and spatial relationship this is LM this is the light microscopy of this and the remnants of infundibular stack which we discussed earlier and this part and this part 
okay this is a parse nervosa which i just mentioned earlier parse nervosa and parse intermediate in the middle and this is a parse distalis um which is already i just uh, mentioned over there this is the parse distalis and it looks like this parse nervosa it looks like this you know the parse nervosa which is the earlier one parse nervosa parse distalis and the same thing here so when you cross section you find this structure and the parse nervosa again uh, follicles what happened inside you see the follicles see these are the follicles in the parse intermedia in between the junction between the parse distalis and parse nervosa so the parse intermedia you find the follicles okay so this is the parse distalis so and you can see the clearly parse nervosa and this so this is the structure you will see in depth in electron microscopy how this structure will look like in the pituitary you can see the scanning electron microscopy that's called the SEM we call it SEM parse nervosa and parse intermedia and then rhetic cleft that's the fissure with the middle okay and then parse distalis you can see this parse distalis here this the area and this is a parse nervosa here. It's over here. This is a parse intermediate. That's the middle portion. So you can see clearly, I mean, how they uh, clearly the different architecture on the cells are forming. It's a bit different. Now let us see parse distalis. What the parse distalis will do, or anterior lobe of hypothalamus. This is the anterior lobe parse distalis. Let's see on type of hormone it is being synthesized there. Okay, parse distalis, this one. Past distalis, our anterior lobe of pituitary, our hypothesis synthesizes, synthesizes somatotrophin, our STH, our growth hormone, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, thyrotropin, adrenocorticotropin, or prolactin. Okay, this also we have uh, seen before, but again, I want to, uh, you know, recollect your memory. So I'll ask a short answer questions of a past distalis. Um, hormone, uh, the anterior lobe of hypophysis synthesized. So, you, you name the hormone. Question, name the hormones. Uh, let's write it here. Okay, name the hormones of first this this past distalis or anterior lobe of hypophysis synthesis so name the hormones means you have to write somatotrophin okay and the luteinizing hormone follicle stimulating hormone um, here thyroid thyrotropin or thyroid stimulating hormone adrenocorticotropin hormone ACTH so you had write STH, GH, LH, uh, FSH, TSH, ACTH. So you can write this as well as this, you know, both of them I need. Don't write only the abbreviation, you know. So please remember to what TSH or FSH, but you have to remember this. So this is a question I'll ask in the exam. Now let us see about the cells of parse distalis. We have seen the hormones that is synthesized. Now let us see the light microscopy, what cells are predominant in the cells of parse distalis, okay? The cells are cars of epithelium defined in the fine, because all these are synthesized some, some hormones, so these are the, uh, the cells which is uh, like a cuboidal cells, right? You know, epithelium cells. And chromophobic cells, they are present 50%. They have containing some, you know, a, give the color chromophobic, they won't, uh, take any color chromophobic acidophilic so these are acidophilic staining it will take this these are, are the cells acidophilic staining it will take it 40% on the cell and then basophilic meaning 
they will they will attract the basic dyes and they uh, you know these are the basic these are the basic these are the basic one basic and basic and, and they are the basic one the basophilic cells so basophilic cells acidophilic cell and chromophobic cell it will take neither acidophilic nor basophilic but it will not take any color dye because when you stain the uh, sections it will take acid dye, it will take a basic dye, but it will not take any dye. So that's why it's a chromophobic cell, phobia, okay. And then other things, the cars and epithelial cells that define boundary. So these are the boundary cells, these are the boundary cells. So these are the cells which you see under the microscope. Okay. Now let's go on to the electron micrograph of the same cell. You want to see the light microscope here, here? And this one is the uh, EMR. Uh, the electron microscopic picture of uh, in acidophils of the parts here you can see the acidophils this is the em electron microscopy and this is the times of uh, 7000 times magnification you find the um, mammotroph with secretory granules you will see that these are the granules these are rough endoplasmic reticulum elongated cisternae and these are the rough endoplasmic reticulum here, 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 okay. These are the rough endoplasmic reticulum. These are the granules which we are talking about, okay. Mammoth secretory granules, all the hormones secreted and it is like a granule. And somatotroph, they are, they are the somatotroph are there. These are the fenestrated capillaries. These are the one with the secrete and it's getting into the capillary. Fenestrated capillary wall is a capillary wall. This is, of course, the nucleus of the cell. This is one cell, a part of a cell. Okay, imagine we checked the earlier slide, and uh, this is the different cells are there, different type of cell. Suppose this is acidophilic. Take the acidophilic cell, this one cell, and look in the magnification of 700 and 7,000, because this is the cell is times 420 times but uh, if you take one cell and that magnified 7,000 times, then you looks like this. These are these can, I mean, microscopic, electron microscopic picture of the cells. Okay. Now, let's go on to the uh, basophilic cells, how the basophilic cells looks like onto the light microscopy. You can see this one, um, basophilic cells. These are the basophilic cells of past distalis, past reactive, indicating this is a past periodic acid shifts reactive staining and for the glycoprotein. Group of gonadotrophs and follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone and IECSH hormones as well. This is 740 times my magnification. So you get gonadotrophic granules that is mainly synthesized from basophils and uh, you get the 200 nanometer, this is the FSH and then LHIH. This is the nanometer dense granule. The, the comparison, how dense they are, just for the sake of comparison, they're given. So basophilic cells, they are FSH and LH. Now let us see on the electron micrograph of thyrotropic and gonadotropic cells. Now you can see this EM picture or the electron micrograph of thyrotropic cells thyrotropic and gonadotropic cells, okay. They will synthesize LH, FSH and LH, you know, these cells. You can see this one is a nucleus, okay. And thyrotrop synthesizing are TSH, 120 to 150 nanometer granules that is being produced. These are the granules. Okay. Now, let's go into how the chromophobic cells looks like. Chromophobic cells. Chromophobic cells, they differentiate into chromophils serving as a reserve population for glandular cells. They are as a reserve population of a glandular cell. This is the arctic chiasma and um, then the light microscopy, neurosecretory hypothalamus, this light, light microscopy, cells of hypothalamus. So this, this is one slide and the chromophobic cell, just for notes on that. Now we will see on the neurosecretory cells, the hypothalamus, and now these are the cells in the, in the hypothalamus. The optic chiasma, where the optic nerves are running through, 
and nuclear hypothalamus contain neurosecretory cells. So he, the arrow indicates these are the cells. Okay. Let's go on the stimuli to hypothalamus. How the hypothalamus is being receiving the stimuli? It can receive the stimuli either by smell or pain if you ex uh, you know experience real pain and that also you know uh, it stimulate of the hypothalamus as well as the olfactory if you smell good or bad and everything that is also stimulated by hypothalamus visual it's a very beautiful pictures or, or a person or anything visual so you are judging it right are uh, the visual some sceneries and psychic and osmotic. Sometimes the psychic behavior is also, you know, that's going on to the hypothalamus. They have perceived. Have they seen any psychic medium and everything? Probably their hypothalamus is the hyperactivated there. So hypothalamus are hypophysial portal vessels, and these are some other, uh, uh, you know, pictures or figures and how they synthesize, where they transport. So they release the excitatory or inhibitory factors. Hypothalamus stimulate etc inhibitory factors and that is will release the the release of inhibiting factors what are the factors inhibiting factors growth hormone here the somatotrophic inhibiting factors and then is the prolactin inhibiting factors pif so they are from the hypothalamus okay and then they release on on the stimulation they can also release srf or somatotrophic hormones GH growth hormone releasing factor, GHRF, somatotrophic releasing factor, SRF, or PRF, prolactin releasing factor, follicle stimulating hormone releasing factor, or FSHRF, or luteinizing hormone releasing factor, or corticotropin releasing factor, or thyro, thyrotropin releasing factors. So, if you see, the releasing factors, there are different releasing factors. They are small peptide. The releasing factor is not a hormone, but this factor will activate the endocrine glands to stimulate the synthesis of hormone. So they are activating factors, are releasing factors, and they are from hypothalamus. So that's why it, it, it synthesizes and then it transported into the capillary and then go to the respective organ, then it will synthesize its function. Now let's see on to the um, uh, scanning electron micrograph or the parts intermedia. You can see the dark, uh, like a, like a valley-like thing, and here the parts nervosa, and then here the cells of parts intermedia. Over here, these are the cells. These are the parts distalis. This is parts distalis, and this is the parts uh, uh, parts nervosa. And then you get these. These are the valley. These are the valley, right? There's a cleft under the spring. So this is an intermediate parts of distalis and this is the lining of the cells of cilia. So in between that while the cells look like a ciliary cells are present. Here, 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 ciliary cells. Okay. Now what the function of this intermediary lobe? Let's see on that one. So the intermediary lobe, they synthesize, you know, intermediate, intermediate lobe, they synthesize melanocyte stimulating hormone, MSH as an adrenocortical hormone or ACTH, they can also synthesis. Also beta endorphin. Um, have you done a um, uh, small uh, gym? Go to gym and do some lot of uh, exercise, weight and, and then run and everything on. Then you keep fit. So mainly you have uh, got this endorphin is going on. Then you feel uh, some sort of uh, uh, feeling good, go to the gym and you feel refreshed and your mind is alert and you are activated. So mainly this endorphin, which is the one which is being activated, okay. Now let's go on to the, how the other uh, parts, let's see on to the part of the pituitary gland. We are still in pituitary gland, so remember that. and. Uh, Supraoptic and uh, paraventricular nuclei over here, this one, nuclei. Optic chiasma, optic chiasma which I mentioned earlier, where the optic nerve which is going over through, if there is a growth of this for the tumor, it will be blocked. 
that make it blind, so you have to remove it, that I explained earlier. Past tuberalis are hypophysis. This is a hypophysis, these are the things. These are some of the network which is going around, uh, you know, the pituitary glands. So, the past intermedia, how this network, the portal system, venous system, this is mainly on the blood circulation or the capillary, how the capillary is networked uh, surrounding the pituitary glands. So, that's the picture. Now, let's see on the pars nervosa and uh, where you find neurohypophysis, neurohypophysis here, here neurohypophysis, the posterior lobe, here the paraventricular, supraoptic nuclei over here, supraoptic nuclei, hypothalamus, these are, these are hypothalamus and this is the hypothalamus stack, this one, and then axon dilations here secretion called herring bodies, axonal termination on fenestrated capillaries. Here, they are axon terminates in the capillaries. Okay, these are the uh, structure of uh, pars nervosa. And let's go on to the neurosecretory cells in hypothalamus, where the cells looks like. You can see the neurosecretory cells. Uh, the light microscopy of these slides, you can see behind the hypothalamus, how the hypothalamus looks like, neurosecretory cells in hypothalamus, okay, on, on the light microscopy of 200 uh, magnification. And uh, let's see um, the next one, which is the pituitocyte or pituitary cells, we call it as a pitu pituitocytes. It can be non secretory supporting cells. These are the cells. Okay, these are the pituitocytes, pituitary cells. Cytes mean cells, pituitary glands, so the cells which is the pituitary. The pituitary cells are non secretory. These are some metabolism they normally do, they won't secrete anything. So pituitocytes are non secretory cells, are supporting cells. And the herring bodies. These are the bodies, you know, just for the darts which is there, they are the bodies and uh, the cells which is going over there, these are the cells. These are the cells. But these are the dark color, that is the bodies, wherever these are, these are these herring bodies, okay. These are the pituitocytes and non-secretory and supporting cells which is present in pituitary. So they are not secreting any hormones. Then we can check in the, I mean, how the mechanism of uh, ADH will, will look into that. that. That's on the antidiuretic hormone, ADH, we call it as antidiuretic hormones, okay. Here the synthesis, transport and storage and release of hormones, we'll see that. Hypothalamic uh, synthesis, vasopressing or ADH hormone, antidiuretic hormone, uh, and the, here the secretory neuron, in light microscopy, you can see the, these are secretory neurons. And um, I'm sorry for this uh, picture, but it is, uh, the, you can see the dark dots, and that's on the secretory cells. And they are being transported by neurosecretory axons. See, as I mentioned before, it, these um, uh, hormones, they synthesized and delivered into the capillaries. And then here you see some of them are secreted and transported to neurosecretory axon. So the axon acts just like a blood vessel here or capillaries. So it receives supra optic nuclei where it receives the transport, you know, of uh, the neurosecretory of hypothalamus, the secretory function. And then it gives a neurophysin, a carrier protein which is present in the axon, and then these are infundibular stack, it transport, 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 transport. And then herring body stores the hormone in neurophysis. Here you can see the cells, and these are the hormones that is there. So herring bodies are really, uh, you know, stores. So posterior lobe of pituitary. And uh, and then here you can see the herring bodies. You can see the herring bodies are more of the storage, storage or warehouse of storing the 
of the hormone or the secretion, which is from the hypothalamus. So hypothalamus and posterior of the pituitary, they have the link with the axons. So they mainly do the function synthesis, trans the synthesis, as soon as that it will be transported and then it's storage by in the herring body and uh, that's why, you know, it, 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 before it releases to the tissues, it being transported across the axon. So this is where it's synthesized and transported. That's another aspect you have to remember. Then where they have the hormones being released now? You can see that in this slide, hormones released on demand for neuro, from neurohypophysis. So that's you should remember. Hormones released on demand. It is not synthesizing always synthesize, synthesize, synthesize. When there is a demand, yes, it will. That vasopressin or ADH or antidiuretic hormone, uh, you have a contract smooth muscles of blood vessels and increasing the blood pressure, the vasopressin. It contracts the smooth muscle. Imagine contract the smooth muscle, okay. And vasopressin, also it increases the osmotic pressure, uh, blood plasma, water absorbed concentrating and acidifying the urine. So that's why the antidiuretic hormone which is being more on that, uh, if synthesized more, it acts like diabetes insipidious. We will see that in a while. Um, so it is not a diabetes mellitus as a decrease of insulin, but the insulin is normal, but they frequently they go for the bathroom for the urine. So that's what it happens because of the Pressin hyperactivity. Another one is the axitocin and stimulates the uterine smooth muscle contraction during um, uh, partition and coitus. So this is very important in the reproductive cycle and how you know this oxytocin is the one that is being excessively being activated and that's that's really helpful in the reproduction. And also oxytocin this stimulates the myoepithelial cells in mammary glands to expel milk. So the oxytocin is very important for the breast milk and secretion as well as the ex expel milk from the breast. So the hormone where it activates, that's what we discussed about this slide. And the clinical comments on this I would like to mention here, which I mentioned earlier, that a deficiency of ADH results uh, usually from the lesions such as tumor in the hypothalamus, okay, and that replaces the neurosecretory cells. The neurosecretory cells no function because the ADH will take over because of the tumor. The end result, the disorder called diabetes insipidus, a condition characterized by the excretion of tremendous amounts of very dilute non-sweet urine. See, sweet urine is the diabetes, non-sweet urine is diabetes insipidus. Five to 15 liters per day, that is the amount. Normally, a person can excrete one between one to two liters, but now you get, you know, more than that. This is accompanied by an intense thirst. Okay, they, they become more thirsty and relieved by drinking by large quantities of fluid, and there are the hypophyseal dysfunction. So you have to mention hypophyseal dysfunction, again the ADH, that the deficiency of uh, antidiuretic hormone. Okay. So the result is antidiuretic hormone, Diuretic, diuresis means more of urine. Diuretic hormone promotes urine. Antidiuretic, it is not, you know, it, it inhibits that. So, in fact, this is uh, like an anti, um, it, it is not controlling uh, of the secretion of, um, of, uh, of the water or the accumulation of water in the blood as well as, and, and, and there is no control. So, what happened, there is more accumulation of this. That's why it's an antidiuretic hormone. Let us see on to the next one. Hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system. And um, this one, um, this picture shows over again the various blood vessels, uh, blood circulation of pass into media, pass nervosa, how the pass nervosa and pass nervosa.
Okay, this is the blood circulation to the pituitary glands. Have the capillaries uh, if of uh, pass distalis here. You can see that one how they network. Optic chiasma again, and then is superior hypophysial artery and vein where the blood supply to it. Okay, now let's go on to them. Supra optic nucleus of hypothalamus. Okay. Yeah, supra optic nucleus of hypothalamus. This is the optic chiasma, uh, the cross section. Secretory neurons of hypothalamus. These are, you can see that neurons, which is uh, this arrow. These are the ones. Secretory neurons. These are the neurons, secretory neurons of hypothalamus. Okay. So, in the summary, of the pituitary gland so far what we have seen is a what we have seen in the summary of pituitary production of neurosecretory hormone paraventricular supraoptic nucleus and third and they also call otherwise they call it third ventricle Okay, pars nervosa, pars intermedia here, pars nervosa. Okay, and the herring bodies are present here, pars tuberosis, pars distalis, and portal nervous system, which is the you know which is all the network, which is also there, and they also to cavernous sinuses where they are placing in the skull. So that's what it is. So it's a summary where you find the pituitary. Now. Let us go into the next one, which is the adrenal gland. We call it a supraarenal. We call it ad adjacent to renal means again kidney. Okay, it's sitting onto the kidney, so we call it the adrenal. You can see that one kidney, kidney, and this gland is stitching. I mean, sticking on top of it. So that's what is called the adrenal gland. And when you see the, uh, you know inside this adrenal you find there are like a cross section or a gland on the blood this is the blood supply how the blood supply is to it and cortex and medulla is the one cortex is the outside you can see this one this part which is I'm just highlighting it the part they call it they arrive from the mesodermal cell and the medulla which is present inside that is coming from ectodermal cell this is look, look, look like funny normally the outside is uh, ectoderm and, the, uh, and then inside is a mesoderm, but in the formation of adrenal gland, it's the opposite. Medulla, which is a, you know, which is a cortex, is, is derived from mesodermal cell. The outer layer is, is derived from mesodermal origin. Medulla, the middle one, and then which is present inside, that is coming from ectodermal cells. So, just so that's just the remember that one here, an adrenal gland. And uh, well, let's see in the developmental stage how that uh, that development of adrenals. Look this one, closely watch. Hindgut, this is the development of an embryo, okay? Development of adrenal gland. This is the iota and the neural crest over there and this neural crest will just form over there. This is neural crest is the ectodermal origin, that one. But the cortex which is present there inside, that is from the mesodermal origin. So surrounds the medulla of the ectoderm. So this is the gonadal ridge and the hindgut. So that's why it's formed. Now you can see the, the another uh, way to see this one, vena cava and iota and renal, right renal gland, this one, renal gland. Superior adrenal cortex supply to the blood, these are the middle cause, middle adrenal, and interior adrenal, okay, all of them. When you see the cross section on the patterns of capillaries, these are the capsule, cortex, and uh, capillaries are sinusoids, and sinusoids of the capillary and bed in medulla, okay. See, these are the cortex, and this is medulla, I mean, these are how the blood supply to the renal tubules, that's what this slide should, looks like. Uh, let's go on to the um, adrenal gland again, light microscopic picture, cross section, we have a capsule that's an outside 
and then you have a cortex here and medulla here okay and also you find the central vein so this is the cross section of uh, of adrenal gland and this is a superior adrenal gland which is the capsule which is going into the capsules okay central vein and different blood system let us see onto the uh, light microscopy of uh, light microscopy of uh, adrenal uh, here we'll see onto the cortical zone in in cortical zone we'll see the zona glomerulosa because each region which is specific these are the capsule which is coming outside is outside okay so these are the cells you know are zona glomerulosa and uh, zona fasciculata or columnar cells here and zona reticularis here so there are different zones the cells are present here and some of the cells are over here and some of the cells are over here and some of the cells are over here okay these are the capillary or sinusoid where the blood supply to it but these are the systems where the ar architecture or the arrangement of the different region are in the same adrenal gland but in a different region, zona, one zone, this is another zone, another zone. Each zone has their own name. This zone, we call it as zona reticulata and zona fasciculata. And this is called zona glomerulosa here. So, and then here, how they, they arranged here. You can see this one, the same thing, cross-section. Dilate, dilated sinusoids, meaning you, you get the more of wider you can see the sinusoid is being dilated but here there is no dilation in that one so they can clearly see if in the dilated all the cells are become near nearby so that you get the tick and um, and then, then architecture will be changing when you dilated or non dilated one or the normal sinusoids and let's go on to the next one is the light microscopy again onto the uh, adrenal cart uh, adrenal see the adrenal cortex which we have seen all the different types of the cells on different region we have just now have seen and now the medulla which is present middle or the inside here the medulla okay now let us see the the zone of glomerulosa how the glomerulosa that that looks like the cells of cortex they form 10 to 15 percent of cortex of the cell what cell 10 to 15 percent zona glomerulus you can see these cells okay and here these cells the cluster cells with the large dense nuclei you can see that these are the cluster of cells so the cells these cells which is present in zona glomerulus okay large nuclei now let's go on to the next region um, zona fasciculator fasciculata, zona fasciculata, clear cells, uh, spongiocytes, you can see the clear cells, they form 75 to 78 percent, and the vacuolator by extractions of uh, lipids, so here you can see these cells, and if you see closely, it is different from the earlier one, you can see this one, round, round, and vacuolator, okay, these cells, See these cells, they form like a sponge. That's why the spongiocytes. The adrenal cortex, 75 to 80, 78 percent of adrenal cortex is made up of zona fasciculata. Okay. Now let's go on the zona reticularis. Where do you find zona reticularis here? And uh, these cells, zona reticularis, you get the cards of cells form network. You can see the network, seven to ten percent of the cortex so these cells different here let's look at these cells they form more close to each other and they form as a as a network reticulum means it's a, actually a network here now let us see on the functions of uh, adrenal gland okay function of adrenal glands so over here what are the functions of adrenal glands they are studied on the cells of zona glomerulosa. They secrete and especially mineralocorticoid hormone, aldosterone. And the aldosterone, where, what is the function? Increase the absorption of sodium and the excretion of 
resorption, increased resorption of sodium and the excretion of potassium in distal kidney tubules. Okay. So the adrenal glands are present on top of the kidney, right? So it can activate where resorption of sodium and the excretion of kidney in the kidney tubules the nearby. Okay. And also it can activate in the renin angiotensin mechanism. Okay, the secretion of mineralocorticoid activate the renin angiotensin mechanism. The renin, what this will do, angiotensin, control secretion of aldosterone and retention of water and sodium. Okay, so angiotensin and aldosterone increases the blood pressure. So the adrenal gland stress, otherwise we call it the stress gland, we call it. So they will activate through the mineralocorticoid hormones and thereby they can increase the blood pressure, all those steroids, and thereby it increases the blood pressure. Okay. So this is one of the functions of, uh, of uh, adrenal gland. Number one, zone, uh, zona glomerulosa. The cells of zona glomerulosa will do this function. We have just now seen the different uh, structure of zona glomerulosa. Remember that one? Zona glomerulosa. I'll just go there. These are the cells. Zona glomerulosa. Where they are present? They are present in adrenal cortex. How much they are present? 10 to 15 percent. And what they will do? They do the secretion of mineralocorticoid hormones. What these mineralocorticoid hormones will do? Resorption of sodium and excretion of potassium. And then in renin pathway, renin angiotensin mechanism controls the secretion and all the retention of water and sodium and thereby it increases aldosterone increases the blood pressure, BP increases because of the activation of zona glomerulosa. Okay, now let us go on to the, the next one. Cells of uh, uh, zona fasculata. Let's see here. Cells of uh, zona fasculata and zona reticularis. Both they secrete the glucocorticoid hormones they call it as a cortisol, steroid hormone, cortisol. Control carbohydrate mechanism, metabolism, and increases the blood sugar level, and promotes conversion of proteins and fat into carbohydrates, and releases the lipids into the liver, and repress the immune system or antibody production, reducing the antibody production, and suppress the inflammation by stabilizing lysosomal membrane. So these are the function of the steroid. Sometimes they used to give steroids for the patients, I mean those who are getting a new kidney and transplantation and everything. So the steroid will have immunosuppressant because it's reducing the antibody production against the newly transplanted kidney. So the steroid are uh, the steroid hormones where it, it controls the metabolism and promote the conversion of protein and fat and carbon releases the lipids in the liver. So if you have excess of Steroids that gives uh, obesity because of accumulating uh, in the fat in the body. So and again, different different type of uh, side effects. But this is a normal process. Normal process. What the adrenal gland will do: carbohydrate metabolism, protein metabolism, and storage of lipid, and repress the immune system and suppress the inflammation and stabilizing lysosomal membrane. So that's why they used to give uh, arthritis, they are osteoarthritis, they used to inject cortisol or, or steroid hormone into the joints directly and thereby suppress the you know inflammation and stabilizing lysosomal membrane so that there may be a cure. So we did a lot of work and I did some of the adjunct induced arthritis in an animal model and I injected cortisol or the di um, for the rat and then we found and it's it's, it's a terrific thing that's going on arthritis but these are some of the therapeutical aspect of this cortisol okay and the next one is the adrenal gland uh, how it looks like again the another picture uh, the cortex and medulla in the cross section okay as I mentioned earlier the clinical comments where the steroid glucocorticoids they repress the immune system and thereby DNA which arrest the mitosis and especially in the evident of lymphoid tissues and thereby it suppress the antibody production and also immunosuppressive effect and, and suppress the immune system and foreign transplant and suppress the inflammation. So the these are the clinical comments especially for 
for the steroids. Okay. Now let's go on to the adrenal uh, glands in, a, in another staining like a dark staining cells show chromatin chromaffin reaction another different type of staining you see the medulla means in medulla you can see the white patches on the cortex okay. when you see um, the light microscopy picture of medulla we'll see the medulla looks like so far what we have covered so far is the cortex adrenal cortex now we will see adrenal medulla chromaffin cells in cards and separated by sinusoid and reticular network and medullary veins here you can see these veins Okay. And uh, yeah, look at this one, light microscopy, adrenal medulla, medullary vein, chromaffin cells here and here, chromaffin cells, and sinusoids. The sinusoid again, mm, the, you know, it's just like, a, like a space, sinusoid is something like a space in between the cells or the tissues where the secretions of the hormones will take place here. So these are the chromophene cells. You can see the chromophene cells. Okay. And uh, the epinephrine and norepinephrine, that is being medullary. Adrenal hormones stimulate many tissues and organs as a stimulatory function. Epinephrine and norepinephrine, that is another, these are hormone synthesized from this medulla and provide sympathetic control under the stress. The adrenal hormones stimulate many tissues and organs simultaneously. Let's see. Adrenal medulla, chromaffin with uh, epinephrine granules. Now you can see that one. These are the electron micrograph. Okay. So here are the lysosomes over here. I'm highlighting this one. These are the lysosomes. And these are the epinephrine granules. You can see this epinephrine granules. I'll just I'll give you a close up for that. You can see. These are the lysosomes and the epinephrine granules. These are one cell, a part of a cell, okay? And you can see the mitochondria. mitochondria and these are the endoplasmic reticulum. <coughs> these are ER, endoplasmic reticulum, here and here and here and here, they are endoplasmic, rough endoplasmic reticulum. So the, the, the granules over here, these are the granules, so, so these, are the, uh, these are lysosomes and these are the granules with the dark they are the epinephrine granules. Okay. Now, what are the adrenal responses to stress? As I mentioned earlier, is the stress hormones. So adrenal responses to stress, okay. Increase in blood pressure, augmented by vasoconstriction, and then increase in respiration, in a heavy respiration, breakdown of glycogen to glucose and mobilization of fatty acids, and energy fight or flight response. So we call it as the energy for fight or flight response that is coming from adrenal gland. So that's why it's called adrenal it's a stress. So write short notes on, short notes on adrenal response. So another question. So I'll write the question here. Short notes on adrenal response. So I expect your answer is it, it increases the blood pressure Increase the respiration, breakdown of glycogen, and energy fight or flight response. These are the answer I expect from you for this question.
criteria for chromaffin cells. What is chromaffin cells? Uh, uh, looks like derived from neuroectoderm and positive chromaffin uh, reaction and profuse in the blood supply. So these are the granules of chromaffin cells or the epinephrine. See the epinephrine? Granules of chromaffin cells, they accumulate the epinephrine and norepinephrine. You can see that one. Let's see on to the thyroid gland. And the next gland, which we in our list, is the thyroid gland. And thyroid gland is uh, in a, in a just adjacent um, on the top of trachea, is the trachea, okay? And thyroid cartilage over here, and isthmus, and the left lobe and right lobe and inferior thyroid artery. These are the outer capsules. So thyroid. Okay, let's see on to that structure in a different. Uh, uh, dimension or the cross section of a uh, thyroid gland where you get these are esophagus because this is near the trachea esophagus and this is trachea and you have the thyroid gland and if you have the cross section you find where exactly the thyroid glands are. And now in the glandular development how the gland is developed in the you can see this face and then mouth and nose and everything on and then uh, these are the developmental stage. These are the uh, foramen cecum. So here, this this region where the head and eye, you can see this one here, the embryo development and developmental stage and autocar. And here, the thyroglossal. This this region. Okay, of duct or diverticulum, and that forms over here. So you can have the trachea, thyroid gland, which is coming over here. It's come here, and then come here. So this is the region where thyroid is present. Okay. Follicles in thyroid gland. So, if you have the cross section of a thyroid gland, then you will find here the colloid, colloid of here, the colloid, and then septa, which is separating the two cells. And these are the follicle in thyroid. So, in the thyroid, you have a follicle, like I can put it like a follicle looks like a grapes, okay, which is coming out the follicles in a small cavity and small uh, capsules like this. And these follicles, especially the, the fibroelastic capsule, can kind of elastic, and then these have been separated by septa, the septa. Okay. So what they'll do, let's see, in a, in a different uh, view, how the follicles uh, looks like in an electron micrograph, uh, scanning electron microscopy. You see these follicles, as I mentioned, just one follicle, and this is a lumen where the is cells are there. The cells are present over here. And here the another follicle. There's another follicle, another follicle, another follicle. These are the cells. The cells are synthesizing the thyroxine hormone. You will see that now. And uh, the thyroid follicular cells looks like this in the, in, in the light microscopy again. You can see the thyroid, how the cells it looks like here, here. You can see these cells on the border, on the septa. You can see this one, these are the cells, these are the cells. Parafollicular cells and colloid, colloid in follicle. These are the collides, colloid in, in follicles. These are the collides in follicles at the middle, but the cells are, you can see the nucleus, the surrounding. That's why thyroid, thyroid cells. And then the parafollicular cells, which is present nearby, but at the same time, they have a distinction. You know, here you can see this one. These are the parafollicular clear cells, which is uh, present in the same order, but it is a different morphology in close-up. Okay, and uh, they form like a parafollicular cells. They form the cluster of C cells. You can see that one here. See, these are the cluster. They always form the cluster parafollicular cells. Parafollicular cluster of C cells. You'll see it's a different structure. And then how the thyroxine is being produced in the production of hormone, production of thyroxine, okay? So in this uh, figure, you find, uh, you know, the production of thyroxine, blood capillaries, these are the blood capillaries, blood is following through, these are the blood just coming out, okay, blood through. 
and amino acids are getting in from the blood capillary into the cell okay into the cell you get the mannose and galactose and rough endoplasm reticulum mitochondria these are the follicular cell which i just mentioned is a follicular cell this is a one cell and the cell is adjacent to blood capillaries you have the lysosomes and, and um, what happens here it gets into the collide storage in the lumen of follicles as i mentioned before these are the follicles right the middle of the these are the middle where the collides are there right so these are the cell i am just giving an explanation from this cell how the cells it gets so these are the one cell and then see one cell how it uh, it gets into the galactose right front of plasma reticulum iodized oxidized uh, iodine which is also taking place inside the cell so uh, thyroxine is nothing but iodide uh, compound right so you have a iodine and the inside the cell unaiodinated thyroglobulin is a protein which is synthesized and with the activating of the mannose and galactose and that is being produced from rough endoplasmic reticulum so the unaiodinated thyroglobulin that is also going to be there and the exocytosis vesicles which will export the thyrox i mean um, the iodide thyroxine to it so they combined with the thyroxine with the thyroglobulin we call it as a thyroid hormone the exocytosis vehicle so the protein which is synthesized in the cell or follicular cell that is being transported into the colloid lumen of follicle and the iron i mean iodized iodine iodized uh, uh, oxidized iodide oxidized into iodine in the rough endoplasmic reticulum and then the iodine also been transported across into the colloidal space or the middle uh, cavity where the colloid storage is there where it combine with the with the thyroglobulin and iodination here which is taking place as a thyroid hormone we call it the tetra iodothyronin or t4 thyroxine and then the lysosomes and as it phosphatase that again they form because the thyroid hormone will enter in and then you can see this one thyroglobulin with thyroid uh, with iodine and the lysosome as it phosphatase will act on this thyroid hormone that will produce uh, tetra iodothyronin otherwise t4 thyroxine and this t4 thyroxine will be expelled out so here amino acids and iodine get in in one part of the cell and it is synthesized the iodine and the thyroglobulin and the follicle or the on the colloidal storage of the lumen of the follicles there it is being formed the thyroid hormones and then getting in back into the lysosome and then as it phosphatase it will produce tetrahydroxy t4 and t4 is released into the Uh, blood and then it is transported across so the process which is going to one side amino acid and iodine and where in this follicular cell synthesize the hormone and again export outside so so this is the structure of um, the follicles and the cell and the blood capillaries how the amino acids and iodine getting into the cell and then it is synthesized into the thyroglobulin in amino acids and the protein and that protein combined with the iodine to form a thyroid hormone in the colloid in the central and then it is again get back onto the membrane here when the cytoplasm that's lysosomal membrane or uh, as it phosphatase convert that t uh, thyroid hormone or t3 hormone to t4 iodination again tetra iodothyronin or otherwise we call it as a t4 thyroxine exported outside into the blood capillaries these are the functions and uh, now we'll see on to the um, the uh, thyroid hormone functions exactly okay thyroid hormone function phase 1 thyroglobulin secretes into colloid mass or exocrine like phase 2 hormones uh, we call it as endocrine getting into the blood stream that's what we have seen earlier the functions mainly on accelerates metabolic process in body accelerate increases the metabolic activity in body regulates body heat and controls prenatal development so all of them are functions pituitary regulation of thyroid secretion that's from tsh that's a uh, uh, thyrotropin and it can also be suppressed by negative feedback where you get the t4 and t3 triiodothyronin 
thyroxine is the tetrahydrothyronine, increases the thyroid output. You have a negative feedback. A negative feedback means if you have T3 and T4, more will be synthesized in the blood. That will feed back and suppress the T TSH, or thyrotropin hormone. So it's a negative regulation. I just, I'm sorry. I couldn't uh, get into the picture clearly here. Now you can see here. Pituitary regulation of thyroid secretion, TSH, suppress, you know, there's a negative feedback where T3 and T4 coming back and then can suppress the TSH production. Generally, the pituitary regulation, thyroid secretion into T3 and T4. Okay. Now you can see some uh, example of uh, the thyroxine. The cretinism mental retardation and small stretcher and protruding tongue, okay. Myxedema, here you can see this is a deficiency of the thyroid hormone, deficiency, okay. Myxedema, where edema of face and body, see the swelling of the face, increase the weight and somnolence and mark the sluggishness. So if a decrease in thyroid hormones, less activity and this is the structure. If it is a excess of that, if it's some, you know, follicle swollen, you know, in the excess, what happened? The follicle of thyroid gland, which has been swollen here, they become toxic goiter sometimes, you know, follicles in, in, in this, uh, some of the cases, retraction of upper lids here. And then you can see this one, this, some people, they used to have a swelling here, that's because of the goiter. Exo Ophthalmus hyperthyroidism. Here is the exo hyperthyroidism. Edematous tissues behind the eye ball. Edematous tissues here. Okay. So that's why the eye is protruding, and this is we call it as a toxic goiter. Yeah. Another one is the development of the parathyroid hormones, which uh, we will see that in a, in a bit development of parathyroid hormone. You can see the descent and inferior parathyroid here and here. This, this is the thyroid and this is the parathyroid. Descending thymus, this is the thymus. The superior and inferior parathyroids here, here and here. These are the lobes of thyroid glands. When you see on to the parathyroid uh, gland on the light microscopy, you can see this one here, sinus capillaries, and they all have oxyphil cells, these cells, glycogen granules. Okay, these are the electron microscopy diagram for one particular cell, okay, parathyroid gland. When you see under the microscope where the glycogens are there, the chief cells and chief cells and capillary sinus and the oxyphil cells. The oxyphil cells are present in parathyroid hormones. These are the mitochondria, the nucleus, oxyphil. These are the electron microscope picture. What is the function of the parathyroid hormone again? Or parath hormone, they call it as parath hormone. They, for, uh, they uh, regulate on the calcium. If there is a low blood level in calcium, um, and then uh, what happens, that releases the parath hormone into the blood. So we have to take enough calcium. If they are not, if you're not taking enough calcium, that leads to parath hormone release into blood. And that will release, they stimulate the osteoclast to absorb more calcium from bone. To absorb calcium from bone, osteoclast. It stimulates, parath hormone stimulates osteoclast to absorb calcium from bone. And then what happened, increase the blood calcium level and reduce the blood parathyroid because if you, from from the bone, you get more of uh, the calcium. From the calcium, calcium is coming from the bone because of uh, less uh, calcium in the blood that stimulate parathyroid hormone and parathyroid hormone activate an osteoclast. The osteoclast releases more of calcium, if more calcium in the blood, and that is reduces the blood parathyroid hormone or osteostatic or the feedback mechanism or negative feedback mechanism. And uh, in other words, the thyroid, calcitonin, and, and also suppress the osteoclastic activity. Thyroid hormone will act opposite to this one. So it will activate. So 
So you have to be careful in maintaining the calcium homeostasis. The parathyroid hormone is being involved in that. So when uh, the, there's a clinical comment where parathyroid hormone disorders or hypoparathyroidism is a pathological condition of decrease of calcium ions and increase in phosphate ions in the blood. When the blood calcium level drops from a normal 10 milligram to 100 ml to about 6 milligram, that's a, these are the blood calcium decrease. This is a normal level, 10 milligram per 100 ml. If it decrease 6 milligram to 100 ml, symptoms of tetany appear. So that's the symptom of tetany, owing to the hyperexcitability of the peripheral nervous system, muscles or spasm in geo, especially sensitive are the laryngeal muscles who spasm, obstruct respiration and usual death in tetany, administration of calcium or parathormone terminates the spasm. So you need the excess of calcium and parathormone is necessary. Hyperparathyroidism uh, hyper is usually caused by tumor. tumor the parathyroid elastic activity and that is in the bone and resulting in elevation in blood calcium and weakening in bone extensive decalcification and then uh, you, know, you got the osteitis or fibrosa cystitis here you can see that one. also calcium is deposited in larger arteries and kidneys and the removal of calcium that may be the condition which will have a normal process so it be very careful in dealing with the parathyroid hormone and now you can see how the patient looks like in a patient in tetany. See his muscle spasms, everything. Hypoparathyroidism, low blood calcium in tetany or muscle spasm. You can see the thin bone here. Also multiple cysts or osteitis here. And replacement of the fibrosis connective tissues here. So you can see the elevated blood calcium contributed deposit in artery. See this is the artery, cross-sectional artery where there is deposit of calcium inside. This is the hyperparathyroidism, results in decalcification, weakening of bones. Hypothyroidism, hypoparathyroidism leads in tetany. Okay. Development of pineal glands. Another one, the pineal glands also present in the in the in the you know in the brain. And these are the development stage where uh, pineal glands, these are pineal rhesus and the diencephalon out pocketing and the development of pineal gland. This is the developing stage. And now we can see the electron I mean light microscopy of the pineal glands. You get the septa over here. These are septa. Fibroelastic tuberculae here. Here. Pinocytosis of lobules and blood vessels. Okay. Now concentration of corpora and uh, this again you know one one area which has been enlarged here the calcium magnesium and phosphate crystals how the crystals have been formed okay they are present there and they are the cross-section of light microscopic picture of uh, pineal glands and uh, if you see in, in depth of the pineal glands we see the um, pineal sites are the pineal cells. We call it pineal cells or pineal sites. Or pineal sites are interstitial cells. Okay, here are the cells. Here, here, these are the cells. And neuroglial cells, interstitial neuroglial cells, some other neuroglial cells. See, there are some triangular cells like this. There are neuroglial cells. Capillary. It's not very clear. Yeah. Let me say. Sounds good, thank you. You don't want to have this in here, do you? Because I've got to get it ready. Because. 
say this. Uh. These are the capillaries which is going over there and the transports of the melatonin. Club like process and brown nucleus. These are the one single cell of the pineal glands, okay, or pineal cells, long process. And then we can see uh, this uh, the, the process where you know it will activate onto the uh, pineal parenchymal cells. Or the parenchymal cells looks like one. This is the electron micrograph of one cell. Pineal parenchymal cells, electron micrograph on that. You can see, um, I can just uh, go in a, in a, these are the microtubules in pineal cells, microtubules. These are the microtubules. Process longitudinal and cross sections. Abundant free ribosomes over here and follicle folded nucleus, the nucleus is folded like this, okay. And then lysosomes, so if you go on a little bit closer, you can see that one. I like to work, folded nucleus, okay, now let's get the folded nucleus and now you can see the lysosomes, it's not very clear but the smooth endoplasmic reticulum but in general it looks like the, the architecture of the parenchymal cells. So that's why I just I, I represent with this one with the round nucleus or the folded nucleus over here, the area one, process capillaries and, and, and how the, the this one it looks like in, in, in a small window, this region, how it will go, okay. With this I'll um, close my lecture and uh, please go through some of the questions which we discuss in this class as well as all the uh, multiple choice questions. Um, in your um, uh, class, um, the practice quizzes, and that will prepare for your exam. And uh, I'll also uh, post some other uh, questions, and I'll um, I'll give some more information. Um, we have one more class to go. Um, that's for the census and uh, um, another one with the tissue microarrays, and I'll. I'll get those.